I'm here right. to full on Town. We're live. Okay. Hey guys, how are you? My daughter, who is now two and a half, she'll be three in August. We've never really given her a full haircut. She like has no hair. You know how some kids are born and they My have like short hair like forever. Uh -huh. So for like, I call it like years and years and years, maybe almost two years, we've been trying to get her hair in a ponytail. So this week for the first time, we, we managed to find enough to put in a little ponytail. And it is like a little tiny spike, like an alfalfa thing that just Aww. goes straight out. Two and a half. So cute. Most of her girls have like like your hair. Right. And it sticks straight out. And I'm like, that is crazy. How do you have hair that all? And then I put mine in a ponytail and it basically right. does the same thing. I'm like, oh, that's how that happens. Um, anyway, Stephanie, tell me your last name again. Sorkin. That's right, because I asked you if she was related to Andrew. Right are now. you? Let's just say that you are. <laughs> Andrew Sorkin is related to Stephanie. It's quite unbelievable. Um, Stephanie is, um, she is a children's author. Yes. But not just any children's author. She's one of those like do-gooder children's authors that are like, let me just put amazing work into the world. Let me take 100% of the proceeds. Let me give it away to charity because why should I be the one that makes out on these books when not only should I put great messages in the world because you're not writing about like potty training. You're writing right. about like awesome things that parents are going through, messages right. to tell their kids, and then all the money goes to charity because you're kind of one of those amazing people we meet in thank life. You. That being said, thanks for coming. <laughs> Have a great day. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Um, how are you? Good, good. Thank you for being here. Tell me about what, what you do and how this all came about. Were you okay. writing forever? I've been writing forever, but um, the, the book that put me on the map is Nutley. Yeah. And I have it here. And um, the way it started was really as a bedtime story. And my inspiration behind the book is my daughter, Mallory. And she has multiple food allergies. So just to make, I always try to find humor in things. So. I started telling the story about this character, Nutley. It's a squirrel. This is He's a story allergic. you made up. I made it up. So, like, so at I was, the night, you were yeah. just like, hey, once upon a time, and she would just right. listen to you tell a story. And right. where did you make up a story? And before, you? well, I always wrote, so it wasn't like it came out of left field. Right. But um, as I was telling the story, I started to realize the rhymes were coming naturally. There was a beginning, a middle, and an end. So I started. Um, telling it over and over and soon the whole family knew it by heart then soon other family members started prompting me okay. to bring it to the next level and publish it okay and so, what, at the time what was like the original basic you know give me a theme of what the story was that you were telling your daughter right and you know I didn't really change it so much so it oh. just started as a squirrel allergic to nuts he told his friends and one by one. Oh, the one. irony of the yes. squirrel being allergic. Do you, do you see the irony <laughs> there? This? Okay, yes. I'm getting it now. Right. I see this. Yeah, so um, it was an ironic story, silly, whimsical. And um, I first started just adding in characters as we went along, but all the characters were based on real people. So we had my daughter Mallory allergic to nuts. We had a fly, no, a, um, a bumblebee allergic to pollen. So each of them had something oh. that they shouldn't really be allergic to. Then I had a dog allergic to bones. Oh my Which gosh. that one was completely made up, obviously. But right. then I have um, one of my other children is allergic to pitted fruit. You know what she's like? She's like Alanis Morissette. You know that in, isn't it ironic? Right, isn't it ironic? It's like <laughs> rain on a summer day. Right, right, right. right. So um, it is, it turned out, um, it was very whimsical. And then I found an illustrator. And as much as it's a squirrel, I had it, I designed it to look um, somewhat like my daughter. She has large eyes. You know, she's always smiling. Ooh. She always looks at the bright, the bright side. Right. So um, how old is she? I had. She's now nine, and we found out about her allergy when she was one on her first birthday. Okay. So you could imagine the party went from laughing and smiling and pictures to oh, good. yeah. Okay. She um, had the allergic reaction at her party because it was really it was the first time that she had cake. Right. Back then. They said to wait until the kids were one to give them some of these major allergens. I've heard that it's changed. now it's completely changed. We've given it for six months. Right. We gave peanut anything, everything but honey. Now we were right. told from our doctor. Right. So uh, do you think that has something to do with it? I, you know, when I look at um, the picture, the big picture, why do so many kids have allergies now? Maybe what because they keep it from them? It's, and, right. Right. It's um, there are studies from Israel saying that um, the kids, they grow up on that Bamba, just like we give our kids Cheerios, yeah. they give Bamba, which is peanut based. Right. So if I were to move to Israel with my children, they wouldn't um, not get allergies. It's a generational thing. Right. So they have this resistance that is built up over years and years of gotcha. eating allergens at a very young age. Yeah. And also there's, um, I don't know if you'd like to hear all the hypotheses, but there is one called the hygiene hypothesis. and 
it's something that I think a lot of us are guilty of, and I was guilty of it when my kids were little. Being a little too clean. Oh, you touch that. You don't want to get cocksacky. Let's put Purell yeah. and let's go wash our hands for the tenth time. I mean, as a child, I basically was rolling around in dirt. We all were, and I yeah. never wore a helmet till like right. Thursday, and right. I never wore a seatbelt, right. and I walked home everywhere right. by myself. Right. Exactly. And we didn't get kidnapped, but you know, it is a different world. Of course. It's absolutely a different world. Yeah. Um, but. The things that I did as a parent, you know, sometimes I blame myself and right. I shouldn't. I know right. that I, I, even some of the doctors say, you shouldn't, why don't, why doesn't your older daughter have it if your younger daughter has, you know, sure. things like that. But, um. How old is your older daughter? My older daughter is 13. So 13, you have two, 13 I have a middle nine. one also who's oh, 10. Wow. Okay. And oddly enough, um. She's friends with Olivia. Yeah. <laughs> she, um. Three girls. I have three girls. Wow. And we just discovered that she has a food allergy. So what. At 10 years old, we were on a vacation and waiting for a taxi, and she took a bite and didn't even swallow it. And she said, "My mouth feels funny. What something she, feels what funny." Was it, was, we, it was it um, was something that looked like an ice cream sandwich, but the inside was cream, and it was like a yellow cream, and the outside had no visible nuts. It had no chocolate on it. Um, she said, "My mouth feels funny," and since it wasn't my younger daughter, I really wasn't panicking at all I just said oh have a sip of water yeah and then she um, got a few hives and then she said she that I got her water she really needed water I gave her two teaspoons of Benadryl and the hives were subsiding a little bit you know they were going they right. were getting a little bit better and she wasn't listless which is a very big sign of an allergic reaction which most people don't know yeah that the child gets um very tired and what, what was the food that she was allergic so, to um, well it turns out um, we haven't even taken her to the doctor yet, but it's definitely a tree nut because okay. where we were, um, and she's had the thing is she's had almonds and um, hazelnut. She eats Nutella, right. but she really, when I think back, she never had a pistachio, okay. so it could have been a pistachio cream because yeah. it was like a yellowy. Right. Cream. Make sure she reads this book. Right. Right away. <laughs> right. Let and go right, right now. Let her read it. <laughs> she knows. What are you waiting knows, for? She knows all about oh, I'm sure. it. Sure. Yeah. But she, um, we're so used to allergies that she she was the one who said I think I'm allergic to something wow. so um, she wound up throwing up and it's definitely an, definitely an allergic reaction we have an appointment with an allergist but some of these doctors you, it doesn't take a week to get the appointment right. just, so for now we just have her staying away gotcha. from all of those things all right so that's nutly yeah are they all sort of themed on allergies no no. So um, oh, wait. So wait. So first yeah. of all, so talk me through. So you decide to get an illustrator and a publisher, and all right. of a sudden you're taking the story that you read to your kids, and you are basically selling it and right. letting other kids enjoy it. Right. Awesome. So the way it got to be a fundraiser was um, here. I had this book, and it, I didn't have the finished copy in my hands, but I had the book, and I said, should I just give these away for free? What should I do? Because I was so eager to spread food allergy awareness. Yeah. I knew that at that point I had a great opportunity. I had a tool in my hand. Right. I could go to schools. But then I realized, number one, I didn't want to um, profit from my family situation. Right. But um, I also felt like it was a great opportunity for fundraising. Right. And I, it was definitely good, a good decision awesome. because it put me on the map. It put Nutley on the map. And it also, what could feel better than seeing your words in writing and being so proud but at the same time raising money for food allergy research that's great tell me about yeah. the other books okay so the other one um is called chocolate shoes with licorice laces oh my gosh it's so <laughs> delicious it's um just a whimsical book about a child that wears chocolate shoes by accident but with um this book i teamed up with souls for souls who donate used and new shoes to kids and adults yeah. domestically and internationally that need them beautiful the, so, the title is great the picture is great that's thank awesome you. chocolate thank you. shoes and licorice laces it's beautiful yeah um thank you and um what i did in the pref in the preface the forward i um talked about how for some children shoes are a luxury right. so for us we don't even think of that we think of oh we're getting new shoes my kids are excited to get school shoes yeah I remember being excited about getting my shoes and I said oh look how high I could jump look at what I could do with right. these new shoes so now now I hope that this is great that's get great. some shoes for a lot of kids What's this? this is um friend me Jane the sometimes friend and it's you might be able to tell by the title right. that it's about a child who has a friend that's nice one day and not so nice. These are next. really strong, real issues yeah, that right. tons of kids are going through. 
I mean, what was that experience like tackling these big things that you know parents are going to be able to, you know, send messages through and, and get to their kids so easily because of something like this? Right. I was very excited, especially about Friend Me Jane, because it was based on a true story. So um, my daughter, my older daughter, once had a friend who was, she did act like a friend most of the time, but on alternate days she may have said things like if you don't choose me as a cupcake partner then I'm not choosing you if you play with so-and-so on the playground then we're not best friends anymore and she was manipulating her to the point where it got exhausting yeah so I had coined the term a sometimes friend I said she's not really a friend she's a sometimes friend and um, my daughter got it luckily at that young age she understood wow yeah, she got it. She said, you're right. And I, she refused to be manipulated. And um, in this book, I give the kids the tools to navigate situations like that because usually we expect a bully to look like, like I'm the little rascals, right. you know, like yeah. that mean bully. He was ugly. He had right. like hair sticking up and things like that. And bullies don't always look like that. Right. So I purposely made it that you have a little girl. This is the bully. She has blonde hair, pigtails, a pink dress. And you don't really expect that. So the irony is in that. And then at the um, end of the story, the main character says um, that she's tired of being pushed around. And she asks if, do you have a sometimes friend? What should you do? Stand up or sit down? It's all up to you. So you, she's empowering right. the child. And then I have um, some classroom discussion. Questions. Oh, that's so great. And Stephanie. then it, it really. That's the, so smart. And I put some in that really were always a topic with my kids, like, can you bully someone without saying anything? And we know even as adults, you could bully someone without saying anything. Yeah. There are adults that do this. Right. And in the workplace, I remember having, when I worked in an office, you have people, they'll turn their back or they'll purposely not include you on an email yeah. or they'll just, it's a lot of passive aggressive behavior. Right, right, right. So sometimes children, um, it makes them not want to go to school things like that and food allergic children are 30% more likely to be bullied because they're an easy target sure so that also prompted me to bring this book to life. has this resonated with children or, or, or parents that you know that are, are getting it for their children oh yeah 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 they're very popular um, I have a website which is stephaniesorkin.com okay. and I hear from parents all the time just saying could you come to my daughter's school or this was awesome. my situation could you help me out with it awesome is this what you want to keep doing? Are you going to keep writing? Yeah. You do it. Yeah. Are. Oh, I love writing. I have um, some things in the pipeline. You do? One is um, about children lying. Oh, and those are great things to talk about. It's just like something that even the nicest kid, like sometimes they just, yeah. you can't judge because you don't know if it'll be your child. Someone right. Else. It's sometimes they'll tell a little lie, like one of my daughter's friends told everyone they had a dog. Whatever For whatever reason, that's what yeah. she said. The story got so out of hand that she continued to make up a lie that she had an elevator in her house which wasn't true but she had an elevator in her house and the door closed on the dog's tail so then they they had to put the dog to sleep and the story was getting bigger and bigger so in my story that's coming out the child takes a little light in their pocket by the end of the story they're pulling a oh, wheelbarrow wow. it's great because it gets harder and, and harder a, as it snowballs it's a great way to open up a discussion with your child by reading them a story, letting them see the example without having to just teach constantly, but let them see how it sort of manifests itself into everyday experiences. Right. What an absolutely fantastic way. I love the idea. I'm surprised that I, it, every single one is almost better than the next one. Oh, I think it's you. really, really great. Thank you. And I, look, I have a two-year-old, an almost three-year-old, and a 15-month-old. Um, oh, wow. You're busy. I'm so busy. And I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm constantly trying to teach lessons. And I'm constantly trying to, like, this is this is what manners are. And like, this is why you're not mean to someone. This is why you say please and thank you. And I'm just on the, the precipice. Like, this is just the beginning. Right. I have a lifetime of lessons to be shared. Right. Um, so things like this make it super easy and fun. And I'm very much looking forward to sort of seeing what, what comes next for you. So tell people again how to, to how to get this. Um, my books are all on Amazon, but you could also get them um, through my website, which is stephaniesorkin.com. And um, they're in some stores, in a lot of stores. Good. And your Twitter handle is on the, oh, uh, is on the link put here your also. Twitter handle oh, good. As well. so. so reach out to Stephanie and tell her why she's amazing <laughs> for coming up with this great idea. And um, encourage her to write more and to take everything out of her head and put it down in these beautifully crafted stories. Right, and if I could quickly mention, tell me, a um, hundred percent of these proceeds go to Fair, which is um, an organization dedicated to food allergy 
research and education. Nice. So you purchase a book, all the proceeds are going. To so fair. selfless of you. So yeah. ridiculously <laughs> selfless of you. But it's I enjoy writing also so yeah. much, and I enjoy the so children, and I'm sure your kids love it. My kids as love well. it. That's yeah. so great. Um, Chocolate Shoes goes to Souls for Souls, and Frenemy Jane goes to an organization that I believe I want to say um, Ellen's a generous supports. It's called the Pacer Center. Okay. And um, that organization helps kids with who are victims of bullying for all different reasons. There are kids that are transgender. Yeah. There are kids, and they have so many resources. Right. But all of these type of organizations need constant funding, sure. constant support. And where's the next? Is, is each one different? Yeah, each one is Beautiful. different. So, um, great. I also have another one about um, that it's raining candy. Oh, so nice. it's also just silly. It's about a child. It's raining candy, and by the end of the story, it's raining toothbrushes. Oh. So I'll donate a portion to um, a pediatric dentist. How fantastic! I love it. Well, Thank I'm you. totally looking forward to that. I think it's such a great idea. Thank um, Stephanie Sorkin, thank you so much. You. I have no, leave I no idea. Leave kids. me some copies. I, they will all be read. Trust me. First by me, <laughs> then to my children. I need to learn first. Um, and thank you. And continued success. And looking forward to seeing whatever else up here turns into something beautiful down here. All right, great. Thank Thanks you so much. Thanks a million. All right. See you. Bye, guys.